to, to you know, establish his venture and also to change his environment. Uh, he is a winner of the, I think it was the MTN National uh, Entrepreneur Award. Um, at the moment, he's got his own company uh, in a design, you know, and probably also marketing field. So, yeah, without further ado, I want to give the floor to Kigosi. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have to be honest, uh, this is the first time that I actually get uh, such an introduction, I have to be honest. No shorts, and just to the point. <laughs> it makes me feel like, uh, thank you very much for the invite as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this year, uh, my name is actually Kigosi. Um, it's actually a Tona name. Um, I, I have been in the, in the design field for about 14 years. I graduated uh, when I was 16 years old. So in the class, I was always the smallest and the youngest. So uh, I had to overcome a couple of obstacles. And um, just for, for the virtue of that, I know that I was telling the prof that I have always been labeled as a weird person. So today, I'm actually happy to share my weirdness with, with everybody. You know, I'm in a space where I can be welcomed for bringing my weirdness. Uh, without no further ado, I will take you to your mind map exactly what's going to happen. Uh, firstly, uh, I'll share my background exactly who I am, and then I'll share with you a concept of mine that I call the vibrant mindset. And then I'm going to go through a couple of couple of uh, concepts that I have, and from then, I also like to entertain the subject of communication. And from then, I'll illustrate a few concepts. And lastly, you're going to see a video. This is this one of my concept of communication. Uh, in a couple of, of uh, conferences that I've been invited to, that um, me being a guy, I am not a good communicator at all, just to start off. Um, and then I and then I had a little one, had a baby, and I noticed something that uh, she would scream, as always babies do at night, and wake me up at night, and I would get so uh, frustrated. And then, then from then, a concept started developing that actually babies, they have actually mastered the technique of screaming, because that's how they communicate. And then I began to explore the idea of if we adults scream, but obviously screaming not like babies, if we could do something that could actually attract or get information or get the attention of whomever that we want, but not necessarily scream, using different methods to be accepted. So I started exploring this idea of babies, and in my journey of that, uh, being an African, I began to explore the idea of what do people think when they think of Africa as a continent? The people, everything that happens around it. And then I did a bit of like my little research here and there. And then I noticed that a lot of people, they consume a lot of products that are not necessarily African. But then even if you ask them if you say sushi, the first thing, half of them don't even know, maybe they might not know that it comes from China, or they know they're just eating sushi and it's good, and okay, they just love sushi. If you put a picture of a pizza, they don't even know where it comes from, let alone who makes it, for what country of origin, but they love pizza. BMW, fast cars, everybody loves it. I wish I had one. Um, so then, and I began to notice that there's not much that the world is consuming from Africa, apart from the obvious, the mines, and, but I'm not entertaining that thought. It's the idea of saying, if we were to go to China right now, you go into uh, a shoe store. Would you find something that you find, maybe like a Taiwanese, you know, little hippie young guy, or you find like a, a mama there holding like a, a, a Taiwanese little baby with a African blanket, or if you go to Brazil, what would you find? What is, if I would say 10 people to list like 10 things, what would they think of? And for now, at the moment, the obvious will be the political stuff, and I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about consumable products. And then I, went a bit further, and then I changed my title to say that Africa is innovative. And then I began to entertain the idea of this subject, about the fabric mindset. The fabric mindset is something that I actually came up with, and um, anything that is not up to scratch, I put it to a course of I might be in trouble with some other people. And then if it's not at the level that the world is accepting it, it's able to consume it, let alone people to actually use it and even buy it, then I realize that there's not much that you can buy with 
five rand these days. Like literally, I mean, we used to get the meat pies back in high school for five bucks. Now you can't even get, like, I, I don't even know how many cigarettes you can get out of five rand. I don't, I'm not smoking. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, two, you can get two. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> but apart from that idea, and then, well, I got into trouble with if someone does something in the restaurant that is not, you know, internationally standard. I would say, ah, that's fat black. And then people look at me and say, what did you say? I'm like, ah, it's cool. Yeah. And then most of my friends, they know that if I, if you do something that I believe is unethical or it is not quality, if I can put it that way, then I will say that it is fat black. And I decided sometime in the future, I'm just going to write a book about it because I noticed something that because of the different, different backgrounds, especially that young African guys like myself have, Sometimes we don't do things of a high standard and we don't even interest, some of us don't even interest to actually aim that high because we think that even if we do it, the world will not consume it or will not even entertain it. So I'm actually on an expedition of anything that I do. And even the guys at the office, they know that. If it's five grand, I'll tell you straightforward. I have got a sticker, I'll just come put it on your screen, five grand to change it. You know? So I am known by most of my peers as a the guy who's actually promoting the five rand thing. So, I and, I, and I normally joke with him, I say that if you say something to me, be careful what you say. I might just say, that's five rand. But I will not do that. Um, these are the iconic uh, historians, if I can put it that way, that have, have actually influenced how I think. Um, I love Leonardo da Vinci because he was not just a painter. I mean, he got into trouble for cutting people, you know, uh, cutting pieces of people's limbs and things like that and started sketching and that's where the whole thing of uh, medicine actually, he actually contributed a lot. And uh, Josh Lucas, even he was, he's a guy that actually pioneered Star Wars. And then he decided to go further than what most people thought was possible in terms of visual effects and what we see today. And then the reason why I put Toy Story there because as I was graduating, I didn't know what I, what I was going to do. And yeah, But I knew that I wasn't a typical artist, you know, pencil, drawing animals and things like that. And then I decided to study 3D animation. And then Toy Story was the one movie that actually inspired me to know that this is possible, this thing can be done. Now, coming up to the things of saying Africans, we don't actually create products that are actually consumable. Now, I normally go around my conceptual thinking and thinking, if I do something, will the other person actually understand what I'm trying to achieve? Because I quote someone said to me, Art is not what you see, it's what you make other people see. So every time when I do something, I'm always thinking that if I do this thing, well, someone actually understand what I'm actually trying to do. But actually putting it, try, trying to come up with something new, something fresh, is a concept for Nike. Now, in the Africans, we call them kadats, uh, in English, slippers. But there's a specific design that Africans actually do slippers. So what I did is I took exactly what's already existing, and then I just made it more, I can put, refined it a bit. Because then I realized that I actually saw a similar one to the top one day. Puma started doing something similar to this. And I realized, that, ah, why didn't I think of it first? <laughs> but then I thought, okay, cool, they started doing it, but now I want to actually commercialize you know, African design looking like type of slippers. <coughs> because I think, I believe that it's, it's hard time, the world, I believe, have done possibly everything that, that we could do. They just waited for us to actually bring out what we have and share with it. Because I might have this notion that if we, if we don't share with the rest of the world, the world can never accept or neither understand what we're all about. For as long as when we package stuff, they're not five lines. Bottom line, they're of a high standard. And obviously the design, it's, it's, I'm talking about leather, sleek leather, nice trimming, that sort of stuff. Now, this one here, this is a huge problem for me. You will see I've got a 3D render of, I combine a toothpaste and a toothbrush. Because me being a guy, I always end up, when I have to pack my stuff, especially traveling, my toothbrush always ends up in my socks section or you know, when I, when I visit someone else's house, I always have like in these small cups and put them in and mix with the other stuff, so I'm not comfortable with that. So then I thought, and I always leave my toothpaste behind in any case, hoping that they have one when I get there. So then I thought, why don't you have a device that you combine the two of it 
And then number one, I mean, we're not going to be consuming a lot of plastic. I'm thinking environmentally friendly. And I don't like the current toothbrushes because there's dust, there's flies, there's all sorts of stuff. So the illustration that you're about to see now, I call it the TT brush. It looks like a pocket knife. You see the front part there, this is where the brush will be. And then that little nozzle there, this is where the whole thing splits up. This is where you actually do the refilling. And then when you unfold it, it is a perfect toothbrush.